Hey, this is Presh Tellwalker. The green ring in annulus is the area between two concentric circles. The line segment is tangent to the inner circle and has a length of 8. What is the area of the ring? In this video, I'm going to present five different ways to solve this problem. Even if you can get the correct answer, you might want to keep watching to the end of the video where I give a brief introduction to visual calculus. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. We'll first adjust the diagram in several ways. We'll rotate the figure so the tangent line is horizontal. Next, we'll draw the inner circle radius with the length of B vertically. The radius makes a right angle because the line is tangent and it bisects the tangent line. So half of the tangent line will be a length of 4. I'll just draw one of the halves as A equals 4. Finally, draw the outer circle radius with the length of C to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. The first way you can solve this problem is to make convenient numbers. If the problem was on a multiple choice test, you can deduce there is a single numerical answer that does not depend on the dimensions of B and C. So you can pick convenient values for B and C. We need a right triangle where one leg is equal to four. We might as well use the three, four, five right triangle, which means B is equal to three and C is equal to five. Now we can solve the problem as follows. We can calculate the area of the outer circle as pi times c squared. Since c is equal to 5, this is equal to 25 pi. We then can calculate the area of the inner circle. This will be pi times b squared. Since b is equal to 3, this equals 9 pi. Finally, the area of the green ring is the difference between the area of the outer circle and the area of the inner circle. So we subtract these two areas to get the answer of 16 pi. If all you cared about was the correct answer, you could mark this on the exam and move on. But there's a larger question. Why does the answer not depend on the dimensions of B and C? In the next few methods, I'll present some general proofs and also give you some idea of why this is true. So first, let's show that the answer doesn't depend on the dimensions of the circles. It only depends on the length A of the tangent segment. We can proceed similarly, but we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. In a right triangle, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, which means A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. Now, just like in the previous method, we calculate the area of the outer circle. This will be pi times c squared. We then calculate the area of the inner circle. This is pi times b squared. The area of the green ring will be the difference between the area of the outer circle and the area of the inner circle. So this will be pi times c squared minus pi times b squared. And we know that c squared minus b squared is equal to a squared by the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, the answer only depends on the quantity a. So when a is equal to 4, the answer again is 16 pi. But we've proven this generally for any length, so it always will be pi times a squared. There's another special case that will allow you to solve this problem is to take a limiting case. We'll let the inner circle radius be equal to 0. So if we shrink the inner circle, the tangent chord will become the radius of the outer circle. To show you what I mean by this, I created a demonstration on the website desmos.com. It's a graphing calculator and a calculator, and you can check it out. I provided a link in the video description. So I created a graphical version of this problem. I created some equations of circles. I shaded in the green ring, and we have a tangent chord whose dimension I've set to be equal to a equals 4 as half of the tangent length. The radius of the inner circle, I started out with the value of 3. I then calculated the area in between 
the two circles using calculus and using the formula pi times a squared. You'll see they're equal to each other. Now you can adjust these variables in Desmos. So let's imagine shrinking the inner circle radius. Well, obviously the outer circle radius will have to adjust dynamically, and you can see that it keeps shrinking as well. When the inner circle radius goes all the way down to zero, we get that the outer circle radius is equal to four, and that's exactly equal to the tangent chord length of a equals four. So you can see that the tangent chord becomes the radius of the outer circle, and so we can calculate the area. You can see that the area in these two formulas doesn't change as you change the radius of the inner circle. It's only dependent on that length a equals four. So what this means is we've calculated that the area of the annulus is equal to pi times a squared, which equals 16 pi, and that's approximately 50.265 as shown in the Desmos Interactive. Now, just to follow up this Desmos Interactive, you can also play around with the length of the tangent chord. So you can see that if the tangent chord increases, you actually are gonna change the area in between the two circles. And if the tangent chord decreases, it's also going to change it. And you can see the two methods of calculation give exactly the same numerical answer. Now for any particular value of the tangent chord, you're gonna see that the area of the green ring is unchanged. It only depends on the, that value of the parameter, a. So it's an interesting interactive and you can check it out and it'll give you a deeper understanding for what's going on. So now another way we can solve this problem, let's return to our diagram. We can use textbook geometry in the intersecting chord theorem. So let's create some chords of the outer circle. We'll extend the horizontal line to be a chord of the outer circle, and we'll extend the vertical line to be a chord of the outer circle. So we'll extend the vertical line. This will be a radius of the outer circle. And here will be the difference between the radius of the outer circle and the inner circle, which will be C minus B. So now let me remove some of the things that we don't need. We just have the outer circle and we have two chords of this outer circle intersecting. The second segment of the vertical chord is equal to C plus B. So the two chords of the outer circle intersect, dividing each chord into two segments. The product of the two segments of one chord equals the product for the other chord of their two segments. So the horizontal chord is divided into two segments four and four, and the vertical chord is divided into two segments C plus B and C minus B. We multiply the segments of each chord and set them equal to each other. This simplifies to be 16 is equal to C squared minus B squared. That's the information we need, and we now return to our original diagram. We know the area of the ring is equal to the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle, and this will be pi times the quantity c squared minus b squared. Well, we've calculated c squared minus b squared is equal to 16, therefore we get the area of the ring is equal to 16 pi. So this is just one more way that you could solve this problem that doesn't require on the Pythagorean theorem, and you can actually just get this based on the intersecting chord theorem. So now let me show you one more way you could solve this problem. It's using a method known as visual calculus, or Mami Khan's theorem. In 1959, Caltech student Mamikon Natsakanyan devised a new approach to solve the area of an annulus, which led to a new proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Imagine rotating the triangle and consider the area the tangent line sweeps out. In particular, look at the area that side A sweeps out. It exactly sweeps out the area of the annulus. Now we can consider a discrete version of this process. Consider the area the tangent line sweeps in 10 degree intervals. These are the shapes of the area swept out in approximately 10 degrees. And these are just approximate shapes to give you an idea of what's going on as A sweeps around and rotates. So one way we can calculate this area is we're going to group all of these tangent sweeps and we're going to rearrange them so they have a common center point. So we separate all of these tangent sweeps, and now we're gonna rearrange these so they're at a common center point. And we end up with a new shape. This has exactly the same area as before. But what is the shape? Well, it should be reminiscent of a familiar geometrical shape. 
this will be something which has a length, a radius of a, and it's going to be a circle with a radius of a. Now, technically, the circle is the limiting shape for the tangent cluster when the tangent sweeps are taken in infinitesimally small degree intervals. But even in these 10 degree intervals, you could get an idea that these tangent cluster would be a circle with a radius exactly equal to the side length a. So the tangent sweep has the same area as the tangent cluster because all you're doing is rearranging the tangent sweeps into a new shape. So you could imagine a special case where instead of sweeping out over the annulus, you actually have that length a sweeping around a center point. So what shape would that make? Well, that would make a shape of the circle exactly. Therefore, we can calculate the area of the tangent sweep of A of the annulus. Instead of trying to calculate that, we could calculate it in terms of this tangent cluster. Well, we know the area of a circle is equal to pi times A squared. Therefore, that's also the area of the annulus. This sort of thought process can be generalized and formalized into Mani Khan's theorem. The area of a tangent sweep is equal to the area of its tangent cluster regardless of the shape of the original curve the tangent line sweeps. Furthermore, what we've just done is we've come up with a new proof for the Pythagorean theorem. Just imagine that in 1959, someone comes up with a new proof for a result that was known for thousands of years. So why does this result in the Pythagorean theorem? Well, we calculated the area of the annulus is equal to pi times a squared, but we also know the area of the annulus is the difference in the areas of the circle, which will be pi times the quantity c squared minus b squared. So we can set these two formulas for the area of the annulus equal to each other. We can then cancel out the pi and rearrange to get that c squared is exactly equal to a squared plus b squared. So we have a new proof of a thousands of year old theorem. So that's the answer to this problem. Did you figure it out? And which way of solving the problem did you enjoy most? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Tallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.